Can you imagine a gory looking superhero who gets his powers through a necroplasm? Well, if that seems horrific, wait until we tell you what this suit is made of. Yes, we are talking about Al Simmons, better known as the Spawn, who was sent back to Earth from hell in his awfully burnt body and his surprisingly powerful cape, which, in fact, is a symbiote. You heard that right. So, without wasting any more time, let's unveil everything you need to know about this symbiote and how they get their powers. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What is K7 Letha and how is it associated with Spawn? Exploring the entire story arc of this symbiotic necrosuit, I am K7 Letha, daughter of the seventh house of K. Spawn's cape was always meant to be a symbiote, but the symbiote's official introduction was in a four-part comic series named Spawn Blood Feud. The series starts with gruesome murders where five bodies, including that of a child, lay mutilated. We are then introduced to K7 Letha, daughter of the seventh house of K, who is craving for the prey while Al is trying to figure out this dual persona he has embodied. Not so far from the crime scene, Spawn slowly regains consciousness from a blackout, wondering what had happened. His alley goonies inform him that the chains and skulls on his armor are moving on their own accord and somewhat weirdly. Spawn shoes them off and goes to his hiding place where he tries to get answers from his suit. He asks his cape if it has a nervous system within the fabric and if it feels any pain. Spawn is also deciphering K7 Letha's body parts, where he claims that the spikes on his armor are probably her teeth, which she uses to feed and gain energy, while the chains could be her skeletal frame, creating some sort of limbs. But Spawn gets no reply from his suit. Meanwhile, the NYPD seeks assistance from a known monster hunter called John Sansker, who discusses Spawn in a public interview and discreetly hints at him being a vampire. He calls Spawn an extra normal hazard. This outrages Spawn, and while he is letting off his anger, he feels another blackout rushing in, and K7 Letha taking over as she smells fear and anxiety. She says that people's nervousness is like an irresistible perfume that she must devour. As K7 Letha takes over, she speaks of a world with dual suns where the remains of the cattle lay. She speaks of the sun giving her life and the slaughter fueling her. For her, feeding feels like like oiling her chains and adding a deeper red of satisfaction to her train. Another attack takes place. This time, 10 people are brutally annihilated, and in the midst of the massacre, Spawn regains consciousness with the cops pointing their guns straight at him. With bullets firing around him, a bemused Spawn makes a run for it. He decides to find his hidden ammo, but realizes it was stolen and sold to his ex-army buddy Jacob. Meanwhile, a secret informant informs Jack Sansker of Spawn's whereabouts, and he decides to confront Spawn. When Spawn meets Jacob at the latter's apartment, Spawn unveils that his suit is alive and is almost a part of him beyond his control. He also suggests that the suit is harming people and he feels helpless in saving them. Soon, it is revealed that the secret informant is none other than Jacob, and Sansker reaches Spawn. Spawn is shocked at the agility and speed at which Sansker moves and the power with which he attacks. It seems as though he's almost superhuman. Sansker flings Spawn out of the apartment and matches Spawn's speed and flight. Sansker continues to attack Spawn, and before Spawn can figure out what is going on, his cloak decides to act and lashes back at Sansker. Spawn gets enough time to make a run for it and hide while Sansker slowly stands back up and decides to continue his hunt the next night. Al goes to a wharf and tries to rip K7 Letha from his body. He blames the suit for killing innocent people. With some help, he nails the symbiote into a trunk before it can reattach itself to him, locks it up, and throws it into the the sea. His alley friends offer him a tattered coat to cover his scarred body and they head back to the alley. As Spawn tries to rest, K7 Letha communicates with him telepathically. She tells him how they were bonded for life and that by drowning her, he had, in fact, drowned himself. Spawn tries to convince himself that it's a dream, but he can feel K7 Letha's pain and a sense of loss. He wakes up to find the alley goons have staked his heart, hoping to kill him. They set him on fire. Spawn runs off to the wharf and plunges into the water. Once again, he hears K7 Letha calling out to him. She tells Spawn that his friends rejected him just as he had done to her. 
She reminds them of their bond and calls herself the raptor queen of murder scarfs and strangle rags and his bonded bride. But Spawn isn't ready to accept her just yet. He still fears her murderous tendencies and swims back to the surface. With the snake still in his body, Spawn finds a place to hide and discovers a dark sewer. But he is not alone. Spawn meets his old nemesis, Violator, who is also a victim of Sansker's attacks and is in hiding. Back at the NYPD, Detective Burke and William are trying to wrap their head around the fact that if Spawn is a vampire, why isn't he drinking the blood of his victims? They are also investigating another suspicious blood bank robbery and trying to find a connection between it all. Violator pulls the stake out of Spawn's body and asks him about his armor. Spawn reveals to him that his costume was either one or more people and that it was probably feeding off the blood as he always woke up surrounded by bloody bodies. Violator casually tells Spawn that his symbiotic suit feeds on souls and is purebred. Violator also informs Spawn that his blackouts could be a sign that K7 Letha was undergoing her fertility cycle and he was suffering from its side effects. Spawn then gets to thinking about who was killing those people and realizes it was a setup to get him. Detective Williams also comes to the same conclusion and digs into Sansker's file for a shocking revelation. Sansker was known as Captain Sean Sancour back in 1704. As the realization of what Sansker really is dawns upon Detective Williams. He gets struck by Sansker. Spawn decides to finally get his symbiote back and uses a bit of magic to start a car, but his green magic is detected by the cops, who send a signal to Sansker. Detective Burke finds William's brutally injured body and sends him to the hospital. He grasps that this is Sansker's doing and follows him. Meanwhile, Sansker catches up with Spawn and assaults him. Spawn tries to use his magic, but Sansker is unaffected by it. As the car races towards the edge of the wharf, Sansker jams Spawn in the windshield and sends him spiraling into the water. As Spawn sinks deeper into the sea, he comes to term with his reality. He realizes that K7 Lethra is probably his only faithful companion and accepts her as part of him. Yes, this is the big reunion. Spawn unlocks the trunk and K7 Letha emerges out of it. Spawn gives in and lets Letha bind with his body and become one with him once again. At the wharf's surface, Detective Burks confronts Sansker, who uncovers his true identity. Sansker is a vampire and the person behind the murders. Spawn emerges out of the water to fight Sansker. Sansker takes on his true snake-like form and engages in the fight, but the sun begins to rise. Although Sansker claims that the sun doesn't affect him as much, he escapes through a sewage hole, leaving Spawn behind. What a captivating story. We have heard of symbiotes being a part of the body, but a symbiote suit seems like a kick-ass character. However, little is known about the origin of K7 Letha. It has been speculated that her name possibly originates in the combination of the words lethal and Lilith. It may also imply that the daughter of the seventh house of K is the seventh daughter of Lilith, the first woman to inhabit Earth in an unwanted spawn. But where does the house of K come from? Again, the writers of the book have not divulged much in this four-part series. We have to speculate that the House of K is the family genus of parasites residing in hell who bond with souls. The letter K also has some added significance. In Hebrew, it is a symbol of grabbing opportunities, whereas in Japanese tradition, it represents life's dynamism or energy. What we do know is that K7 Letha was not the first or the only symbiote suit. Earlier in Spawn Magazine, another hell spawn named Billy Kincaid had a symbionic armor called K3 Mirlu, who was given to Kincaid by Mel Bolgia of the Eighth Sphere of Hell. It was also revealed then that the suit is a constantly evolving neural parasite and that all of Mel Bolgia's conquests were one. It also means that the symbiote is attached to the host's nervous system in not just the body. What is K7 Letha made up of? As discussed earlier, Spawn assumes that parts of his armor form appendages of K7 Letha's body. But what is K7 Letha really made of? She is made from a material known as necroplasm, which also shapes and empowers all of the hell spawns. Let's look further into what necroplasm is and how it came to originate. In the initial Spawn comics, Todd McFarlane mentions that Spawn is made from a substance originating from hell called psychoplasm, which he later changed to necroplasm 
microplasm. He clarified that both substances meant the same for all intents and purposes. However, Todd wanted to dapple with the idea of empowering the dead using a term that was similar to it. Hence, he coined the term necroplasm. Necro meaning something related to death and plasm meaning fluid or lymph. Necroplasm is a natural substance that is found only in the eighth sphere of hell, which is now ruled by Malbolgia. Malbolgia was created by Leviathan from necroplasm as his demon servant, but Malbolgia used his powers to gain complete control over the eighth sphere of hell and overthrew Leviathan from that sphere. Necroplasm is the magical green matter that flows through both Spawn and K7 Letha and gives them their powers. Malbolgia uses necroplasm to create his army of hell spawns. However, each of them has a limited supply of necroplasm, which gets depleted each time they use their power. Once all the necroplasm is used up, the hell spawn has to return to hell. But when it comes to K7 Letha, the extent of her necroplasmic supply is unknown. What we know is that she gets her fuel from consuming souls and not from the green fluids alone. Also, she can feed off spawns necroplasm Necroplasm, which probably makes her more powerful than him. Additionally, K7 Letha is connected with Spawn's nervous system and nourishes herself using his spinal fluids too. But she returns the favor by protecting and energizing Spawn whenever needed. Being a symbiote, K7 Letha does not have a clearly defined shape. She takes the form of her host and adorns him with skulls, chains, and a blood red cloak, which are part of her bodily form. These appendages have evolved over the years, but then again, K7 Letha is also a constantly evolving neuroparasite like her sister K3 Mirlu. Exploring the incredible powers of K7 Letha, K7 Letha is an interesting symbiote and one that is said to have evolved faster than her sisters. While we know that she empowers Spawn, what exactly are her powers? Let's find out. K7 Letha can communicate with her host telepathically, like most symbiotes. Her ability to continually and rapidly evolve gives her the potential to transmutate into a powerful symbiotic suit. This means she can possibly take complete control of Spawn in the future, or could modify it into being that he doesn't require a host. We'll have to wait and watch that progress. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments on this one. Coming back to K7 Letha's superpowers, she can shapeshift like her sisters and add new embellishments to her host's suit. As we have seen, Spawn's suit change over the years to add chains, spikes, and skulls to it. Another interesting ability that Letha possesses is concealment. She can mask herself to match her surroundings and help her host hide in plain sight. She is flexible, agile, and has flight fluidity which she uses to empower Spawn to move quickly across locations. These powers are exercised through Letha's crimson cape. We see Spawn use this ability to run away from Sansker when he gets attacked at Sunny's apartment. We know K7 Letha acted on her own accord when trying to save Spawn from Sansker. She was powerful enough to punch him down, though not knock him out completely. This means Letha possesses supernatural strength. Not only can she beat the crap out of her enemies, but she can also take a few hits for her host. Moreover, the chains and spikes on Spawn's armor also give her super strength and are unbreakable. K7 Letha can cannot die. Well, Spawn technically cannot die either. They both come from hell after all. But this does add to her ability to last longer in a fight and come back after each attack. The only way to send her back to hell is if her host consumes all units of necroplasm and has no choice but to return. K7 Letha sounds like one hell of a character, doesn't she? We are excited to see her evolutionary arc in the comic books and what she will be capable of achieving in the future. Can K7 Letha be our new anti-hero? Let us know what you think about this necroplasmic symbiote in the comments below. 